Positive Spin, presenting positive, innovative, and solution-oriented news from all around the world. On the International Day of Peace, we reflect on the cruel price of war. On today's program, we'll interview the co-founders of Pathways to Peace, the International Secretariat for the Culture of Peace Initiative. From almost the beginning. And we'll hear the song, Higher Ground, featuring playing for change musicians from all around the world. Then we'll learn about the innovative way Filipinos in the United States are sending funds to their relatives in the Philippines. More than 90 percent of people here have them. Ben, Ben's a lot of things. And ben we'll see a profile of Benjamin Rosloff, ben a young filmmaker living with autism. Very high level of energy and enthusiasm into his work. Following that, we'll experience a beautiful nightly ceremony bringing love and hope to children living in a hospital in Rhode Island. Finally, you'll hear some personal messages of peace from children. In our first segment, I was privileged to interview two very special people who have dedicated their whole lives to promoting peace throughout the world. Ava Madison and Joni Ciardelli, the co-founders of Pathways to Peace. On the International Day of Peace, we reflect on the cruel price of war. Ruined schools, bombed hospitals, broken families, refugees searching for hope, countries in crisis. The United Nations was born from a terrible world war. Our mission is to work for peace. One organization at the forefront of promoting peace is Pathways to Peace. Pathways to Peace is a non-governmental organization founded in 1983. It's a peace messenger organization of the United Nations and has been affiliated with the United Nations for many years. And it's the International Secretariat for the We the Peoples Initiative, which is now the Culture of Peace Initiative. The and core of that is the International Day of Peace. It's 21st of September, which is a global holiday that has been growing for many years. It started in 1981, so Pathways has, is a consulting organization and works with non-governmental organizations all over the world to bring them together and to foster peace through the eight paths to peace. Peace through law, through science, through education, through culture, uh, through business. We try to bring together groups that work in each of these different fields. So Ava, could you please tell our audience about the very beginnings of the International Day of Peace and the central role that you and Robert played in that? When something is meant to happen, that is going to be of benefit to this planet and to humanity. It comes through many people at one time. It's through a few people that were willing to just go against all odds. And we knew that it had to be done through the United Nations because that is his purpose according to the, the preamble and charter of the United Nations. So the resolution was passed unanimously in November of 1981, which is historic because it's the first time that all nations have agreed to one day that would be a universal day of peace. And as it says in that resolution, to commit to peace above all differences of any kind and to add to that on a daily basis. So peace day for what we've been doing with Pathways to Peace is Peace Day is the annual highlight day where we look at how individually and nationally and, and planetarily we have contributed to, to peace. 
we made certain that it involved all members of the community. Every single person could do something, whether it was from a minute of silence, moment of peace during a peace wave at noon in every time zone, which we started in 84, or whether it was just being kind to your neighbor, or um, in those days, recycling didn't exist, but we just said picking up litter, whether it's yours or someone else's, it's just simple acts of peace, but mostly it's about understanding that peace begins with oneself and then it begins with the connection you have with one another and with our beloved planet. And by 1984, in over 70 countries, linked with us, and also we began to have different agencies at the UN involved who didn't even know that this existed, it was just a resolution. So what it is, has happened is that this day has become a seed for a culture of peace. It has become a movement that is now self-organizing all over the world with literally millions and millions of people. It's estimated that over a billion people are now involved in Peace Day. And this is remarkable because it's become a movement for everyone to participate in peace in their own way, not only on that day, but every day. But to know that together, they are building a culture of peace in all of this extraordinary diversity that is a benefit for all. And you've been part of that from almost the beginning Dear, dear colleague, peace brother. What else are we going to be doing? Huh? <laughs> that was so inspiring. You encapsulated the beginning, the growth, and where we are now, and where we can go in the future, and where we will go in the future. Because there's no stopping. There's no stopping that thing which is real. And that thing which is real is that inner peace that resides in all of us. It's indestructible. It's pure energy. Nothing's going to stop us. We're going to do it. More than 10 million Filipinos work abroad, sending home more than 20 billion US dollars a year. However, most do not have bank accounts, so receiving those funds overseas has been difficult for their families. The cell phone provider Global Telecom, with support from the International Fund for Agricultural Development, came up with an innovative system called GCash, which allows Filipinos instant access to the funds they receive from their relatives abroad. In the Philippines, more than three quarters of the population do not use banks. But Arlene and Remedios can still instantly access money sent to them by their relatives working overseas. The key to this? Their mobile phones. And more than 90% of people here have them. This technology is now closing the distance between people in the Philippines and their family members supporting them from overseas. There are an estimated 10 million Filipinos who work abroad. Each year, they send home more than 20 billion U.S. dollars. Remedio's daughter is one of them. She lives in Saudi Arabia and regularly sends funds to her mother to support her two children. For Remedios, this money is vital. It's very sad and very difficult because my child is far away from her own children. If they are sick, I'm the only one taking care of them. So, as her grandmother's only caregiver, Remedios cannot afford any delay in receiving the remittances. But until recently, her choices were either courier services or outlets that weren't fast, cheap, or easy to use. Globe Telecom, the second largest cell phone service provider in the country, saw a gap in the market. So they launched GCash, and the mobile phone was the perfect vehicle. For rural people, mobile phones are not just convenient, but sometimes the only way they can access financial services. Working with Globe Telecom, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, or IFAD, is expanding the service to rural areas. Pedro de Vasconcelos from IFAD. 
Well, if we consider the $450 billion in remittances that go to developing countries every year, we need to understand that half of that goes to rural areas. Reaching rural areas has proven to be very difficult. But over the last years, what we've seen is the rise of mobile technology. And this has been proven really a magnificent tool to provide this service to these families. <laughs> Remedios, for example, is instantly alerted when remittance money is sent to her. Within seconds of receiving the text message, she can collect her cash from a nearby outlet. I just have to show them my ID and they look at my cell phone to see if the reference number matches the number that they have and then they release the money. It's just so fast. And there are even faster ways to use the phone to access money, where the cell phone itself becomes a mobile wallet. When you receive the remittance, if you want to buy airtime or pay your bills, you can just stay at home and use your cell phone. People like Arlene can now pay their utility bills and even their children's tuition fees directly through their phone. There's also an ATM card connected to her SIM, and she can immediately withdraw the money she needs. Gcash currently processes about 10 million U.S. dollars in international remittances each month. And they are working toward a future where all money can effortlessly cross borders from mobile phone to mobile phone. This report was produced by Joanne Levitin for the United Nations. Benjamin Rosloff is a young filmmaker who has been living with autism since birth. However, that has not stopped him from pursuing his dream of making films on global issues and participating fully and effectively in society. Benjamin Rosloff expresses himself with music, but when he's not playing the cello, he's making films. My father bought me my first camera when I was 14 years old. My biggest dream is to be a filmmaker, like a producer or a director. Benjamin has already shown his films at festivals around the world. The first film that I did, which was a documentary short, was called Can I Call You? It's about me trying to go on a relationship with someone who's not disabled. Can I call you? Yes. <laughs> ben is indeed a remarkable young man who has been living with autism from birth. He's a 23-year-old living in New York with his parents. Ben is not alone. 1% of the world's population, over 70 million people, is living with autism. Some would refuse to let autistic people go to regular schools, and parents fight about that. That's why it's important to see like videos about their lives. Like, even though they're disabled, there's things that they can do. Benjamin has just landed a job as an intern at New York City's mayor's office for people with disabilities. Ben and his supervisor, Jonathan Novick, produce films to highlight people with disabilities who work for the municipality. Ben, Ben's a lot of things. Ben is positive, Ben is friendly. He brings this, this very high level of energy and enthusiasm into his work. I work here as cameraman and editor. I travel with Jonathan Novick, and together we meet like people with different disabilities and like I do the recording on camera while Jonathan Novick does the interview. Randy Washington, who's working with Ben, helps keep him focused and on track. Watching films is one of Ben's favorite things in life, and Randy is really impressed with Ben's encyclopedic knowledge. It's amazing the, the stuff he remembers from the movies, and he, he's hardworking when given a task, wants to complete that task. So I guess it would be he's a perfectionist. Recently, Ben contacted the United Nations and was invited to visit the organization. Today, he's going to interview the Secretary General, Ban Ki-moon. Ben could have never imagined that one day 
he would have the opportunity to discuss with the UN Secretary General the pressing issues that affect billions of people worldwide. Last December in Paris, the world leaders came and showed their commitment to keep global temperature rise below 2 degrees, if possible 1.5 degrees. Under this agreement, we can cut emissions. Among the questions Ben asked, one was very close to his heart. Why is autism an issue for the United Nations? Some societies discriminate on or shun uh, people with autism. This is a terrible uh, violation of uh, human rights. The United Nations stands with all people with autism. Benjamin's resolve to work and produce films is an example to the millions of people with disabilities worldwide. He knows that anything is possible when you dream, and if you work hard, your dreams can come true. This report was produced by Michael Wopatniuk and Flaminia Bondi for the United Nations. And now we'll hear musician Vernon Black introduce a song by Playing for Change. In the following segment, we will hear the song Higher Ground, performed by Playing for Change musicians. The song speaks of the perseverance it takes to reach higher consciousness. Let's all keep trying together, one heart and one song at a time until we all reach the higher ground. Yeah.
I'm so glad that I know more than I knew then. Gonna keep on trying. Welcome to Hasro's Children's Hospital in Providence, Rhode Island, my happy place. It's a very, very special place to me. They deliver much love and kindness to bring the children back to joy. All children are precious to us, and we always want the best for them. So when they're in pain or poor health, our hearts go out to them and our only desire is to heal their pain. Positive Spin traveled to East Providence, Rhode Island to witness a unique act of humanity at the Hasbro Hospital, built by the toy company that created the iconic Mr. Potato Head in the 1950s. Hey, it's Hasbro. Hasbro makes toys. What's new, Hasbro? Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head with their own cars and trailers. That's what's new. We're here in East Providence, Rhode Island, where every single night at 8.30, the Hasbro Children's Hospital, police, fire people, just regular people, come and shine their lights, awaiting patients, young patients in the hospital, who then flash their lights back. It's a momentous and very moving and emotional experience that's been going on year after year after year, inspiring these young patients that people really love them, care for them, and are there for them every single night. Seven years ago, this one doctor had a vision of saying goodnight to his patients. Riding home on his bicycle, he flashed the lights off the bike up at the hospital, and all the children waited in anticipation, and they flashed their lights back. And now seven years later, every single night, people come, they flash the lights at the children, and the excited children know that every night, people love them, care about them, and are there for them to wish them pleasant dreams and a good night. Grace was born really premature, and she had to have abdominal surgery, so. Hey, <laughs> all the lights bright for you, huh? So we got in our jammies and had to come down here, right? But we've been home from the hospital for six years. some personal messages of peace from children.
confusing and poor and because I think everyone should be nice and loving to each other. And I think that peace is like having fair, like equal to like everybody is equal in this world. And that everybody should show respect and courtesy. What does peace mean to you? Peacefulness. Relaxing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our show for today. We hope this program has inspired you to take action in your local community to create a better world. I'm Bill McCarthy. And from Marin County, Vernon Ice Black here. From lovely Rhode Island, Maureen McCarthy. And I want to remind you that everyone can make a difference. Go out and make some positive news. Positive news. Positive news.